Which one's Chica? I know, um, I know Freddy. Freddy's the bear. And I know, what's the bunny? Not Lola. Mm, I don't think it's Bonnie. Mm, what's, what, who was Matthew Lillard in the movie? Not Scooby-Doo, the other one. Shaggy, Shaggy, that's right. You're right, I do not know the lore. I, um, I remember the first time I heard about Five Nights at Freddy's, it was at an Airbnb in Seattle for PAX West, and Mathis was like, Twitter's going crazy over this uh, new game, apparently. It's called Five Nights at Freddy's. And I was like, what is it? And he's like, it's like an animatronic horror game. And I was like, mm, I think I'll just keep playing Isaac for like another six years. And you wrote it off? Well, like, it's, at any point, there was no risk of me becoming like a horror YouTuber. Like, I was there when Amnesia came out. And I said, I don't know if it's really for me. It's just not, uh, it's not an authentic skibbity for my riz, honestly. Penumbra series was better anyway. DL Guiga, how old are you? Because on Peloton it says you're in your 20s, but Penumbra, 29? Okay, so you're thir in your 30s. Okay, understood. Penumbra came out in like 2009, right? What were you, like 14? I'm trying to crunch the numbers. All I remember about Penumbra is after Amnesia got big, there was like a humble bundle with Penumbra in it, and I bought it, and then I tried to play it on my laptop, but I remember that one of the things, this was like groundbreaking in the late 2000s, you had to like move your mouse to open the door. Like you wouldn't just click on the door, you would click on it and then like swipe upward in order to do the physics to push the door. But I couldn't do it on my laptop touchpad because I would like have to hold the click, which is the entire touchpad, and then have to use like two, a two finger touch in order to swipe upwards. So I, I sat there for like 15 minutes trying to figure out how to open the first door and then it just didn't work. And I was like, this game's a piece of garbage, man. <laughs> Obviously it's not, but it, it certainly was not built for my Lenovo ThinkPad. Can we bring back the Humble Bundle model, but for Walmart instead? I just wanna pay 50 cents for two gallons of milk. Brother, Walmart is the, is the Humble Bundle of Walmart. Do you mean Costco? No, Walmart is cheaper than Costco. The catch is that the products at Costco are better. So if you take like Walmart prices and multiply by like 1.1, you get to Costco. If you take Walmart quality and multiply by like 1.4, you get to Costco. It is crazy to think that um, Humble Bundle was like insane, dude. In 2000 and... 10 or 2011, you got to remember at, in this era, there were six total indie games that had ever come out that had been good. Humble Bundle said, mm, what if we bundled all of them together and you could uh, pay literally one cent for it and then give all of the, the one cent entirely to charity? Like, let's, let's just look at list of Humble Bundles. I felt like... Number one was like not, it was like, whoa, I didn't know you could do that. But then number like two through 10 was like, oh my God, this is the greatest deal that the history has ever created. List of humble bundles. Indie game bundle wiki. Here we go. Bundles. Starting in 2014. Are you crazy? Okay. Humble indie bundle. Oh man. First one. World of Goo, Aquaria, Gish, Lugaru HD, Penumbra, Overture, and Samaras 2. This one still went crazy because you got World of Goo, Aquaria, but also, and Penumbra, I guess, but also it was like, whoa, six games for a buck. That's crazy. Humble Bundle 2. Ooh, Braid, Cortex Command, Machinarium, Osmos, and Revenge of the Titans. I mean, Braid was a huge get. Humble Indie Bundle number three. Crayon Physics Deluxe. Cogs, VVVVVV. Ooh. Hammer Fight and Yet It Moves. Steel Storm Burning Retribution. Adam Zombie Smasher. People said five goes crazy. Let's see. Humble Indie Bundle five. 
Amnesia, Psychonauts, Limbo, Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery. And if you beat the average, you got Bastion, Lone Survivor, Braid, and Super Meat Boy. Holy, bro, the average is probably like eight bucks. Amnesia, Psychonauts, Limbo, Super Brothers, Bastion, Lone Survivor, Braid, Super Meat Boy. Holy, dude, this, I, I was thinking like I bizarrely have limited nostalgia for the 2010s, despite being, you know, in my early 20s. But seeing the screenshot of Humble Indie Bundle 5 is bringing me back. They had like the pixel art of the dude sitting on the shelf. Pay more than an average of $7.88 to unlock Bastion, Lone Survivor, Braid, and Super Meat Boy. $7.88? Holy, man. Now, where did it all start going off? Number six. Number six, still pretty good. Beat the average, get Jamestown, Goaded Game, Dust Force, Bit Trip Runner, Torchlight, Space Pirates, and Zombies. Now, let's see what we got. When was the, what was the last Humble Bundle? Humble Indie Bundle 8. Did it really only make it to 8? It was too beautiful to live. Little Inferno, Awesome Knots, Capsize, Thomas Was Alone, Dear Esther, Hotline Miami, Proteus, Tiny and Big, Intrusion 2, English Country Tune, and Oil Rush? That was still pretty good, man. I guess like anything. Like it came out and it was great and it was popular. But then it had to make money. So they were like, we're going to make the deal a little bit worse so we can sustain ourselves. And then people were like, you can't do that. You can't walk it back. We got juiced on the rocket fuel. And now you want to take it down to regular petroleum? I don't think so. Humble Indie Bundle 10. To the Moon. Joe Danger 2. Papa and Yo. Bit Trip Runner 2. Reyes. Surgeon Simulator. Horde. That was still, that was still pretty solid, man. I don't know how we ended up on this. Humble Indie Bundle 10, 11. They stopped making articles for them around 13. Let's see. Humble Indie Bundle 11. Guacamelee, Dust and Elysian Tale. Gianna Sisters, Twisted Dreams. Okay, that was crazy. The Swapper. Anti-Chamber, Monaco, Fez, Starseed Pilgrim, Beat Buddy, Tale of the Guardians. Dude, all the bundles went crazy, okay? I'm willing to say it. I don't know if anybody else signed up for like a thousand different um, bundling services back when bundles went crazy. A couple of them still exist and they uh, email me because they, they're still alive, right? But then like so many of them have like pivoted to pornographic games. Like they used to just sell indie games, but now every email I get from them is like, Try not to come Goblin Girl Challenge. Also, uh, Terraria's on sale again. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here, man? You gotta do what you gotta do to survive. Free Eastern Europe Truck Simulator. Then it has a, like a bar. You know the punctuation mark, a bar. Free Eastern Europe Truck Simulator. Bar. Doll Island Adult Manga Bundle is live. Just a little too much, man. Just a little too much for me. You don't like manga? Bro, I don't know how to read. How many times do I have to tell you? 1965, 156 million views. This has to be the Beatles or the Beach Boys, bro. Pretty woman walking down the street. It's not Pretty Woman. Okay, I thought for sure it was Pretty Woman. Let's go number two. I can't get no satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. Guess, that is correct. All right. I had the same guess. Dude, it was, I mean, it started like, uh, do, 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 POV, you're calling your 62-year-old uncle in 2007, but he's at the pub, so he can't hear you. Midi is so funny, dude. It's an Ohio-ass ringtone. It was either this or Brown Eyed Girl. Hey, did you see the video of AI translating that uh, Van Morrison concert into Mandarin Chinese? I don't speak Mandarin Chinese, but it seemed like he was just kind of spitting some nonsense. And then someone said, hey, I took the AI of it speaking Chinese, and then I ran it back through an AI of making it speak English. 
<laughs> and then it was, I was like, he's definitely saying nonsense now. I, it's not the same without the image of Van Morrison in the background, like barely holding it together while he sings this stuff. But it's so good. Hey, Dowaku, thank you for the gifted subscriptions too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then the, the English one is so good, man. Turn up your cash register. Hell yeah. On the land of eternity, 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 eternity. Open your computer. <laughs> start to make mistakes real mistakes really I like holding you in my he might have actually said that so one I can, I can feel so I can feel Anyway, I think there's one insane comment. This could be a song that was left off Remain in Light. No, it fucking couldn't. What are you talking about? What, in what way is this similar to Remain in Light at all? You know, those Remain in Light songs where David Burns sounds like Frankie Valli and it's just him and a fucking electric guitar and a really high snare drum. Like, what are you talking This doesn't sound anything like Remain in Light. Let me see the replies. It's got 11 likes. Show more replies. Ha ha ha, the one reply. Ha 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 ha. I'm surprised it doesn't say uh, I dated David Byrne in high school. He was mid, to be honest. I have seen that. I have seen the clips from Squid Game, the real show. Here's the thing. Yeah, it's the dude who starts to have an emotional breakdown because he realizes he's not going to win the show, so he's going to be in debt for the rest of his life. I watched the first episode because I thought that what they were going to do was just ignore the overtones of Squid Game and make it fun. They'll be like, yeah, we know the show was about like late stage capitalism, but what if we just turn it into something fun? But they did not do that, which is crazy. Instead, they were like, every player's introduction is like i have like a mortgage that's going to kill me it's the new american dream is to pay off your car and then they just show them getting eviscerated because they can't wrap their brains around red light green light I, this shit was make, making me sad man I, I couldn't make it through like the first episode I thought it would, you know, like most game shows on TV, they're like light and fluffy. It's like, uh, you know, you, maybe you'll win a new car. Maybe you'll win a new trip to a uh, trip to New Westminster or something like that. This one was really like, we're all broke. Then they get eliminated and start weeping. And I'm like, damn, I'm not watching this. The haters were right. It is also very funny that I've, they were all, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying they deserve it, but the contestants pogging up when they went into the dorm room where there's like 100 bunk beds stacked like an open-air prison, and they're all like, it looks just like the show, let's go! I was like, you know what show you're on, right? Like, it's Squid Game, brother. It's supposed to suck ass, and they're like, look at how authentic it is to the real experience. Apparently, Red Light, Green Light took six hours to complete because they had them stand still for 30 minutes at a time. See, that's something they should have said in the, on the actual episode. Instead, they have that poor lady who freezes in a squat. And then after like what appears to be 30 seconds, she's like, fuck it, I give up. And then just like takes the L. And I'm like, wow. It, the narrative is like, whoa, the modern generation's so weak. I'm like, dude, if she I had to hold the squat for 30 minutes, I'd be giving up too. That, that explains how 200 people lost. Because, like, for real, when I was watching it, I, I said the same thing when I watched real, well, I guess fictional Squid Game, which in my head is real Squid Game. You would not catch my ass losing in Red Light, Green Light. I'm 100% going down in the Dalgona uh, poke out the shape from the candy game. I don't have the temerity for that. 
Uh, I don't have the detail-oriented uh, brain that excels at that. I don't have that kind of patience. I would get impulsive and try to go fast, and I would break the cookie for sure, and they would kill me. But you would not catch my ass losing red light, green light. All you have to do is not walk when it's a red light. Like, I don't understand. What about tug of war? Well, thankfully, I wouldn't have to worry about it because I already would be dead from the, uh, the candy game. So I don't have to worry about all that tug of war stuff or the tiptoe at the end or I don't need the marble game where you got to tri you know, trick somebody into killing themselves so you can survive or whatever. What if you got square in the candy game? Circle's the easy one, right? And then umbrella's like the nightmare. I don't even, I'm just being honest. I'm not even sure. Oh, triangle's the easiest? I don't even know if I could do triangle, man. It's just not in my, my wheelhouse, okay? You can catch my ass eating the cookie. I might as well go out with a full tummy, 21 calories of straight <laughs> burned sugar, straight to the dome piece. I'll probably try to eat some other cookies on my way out. Are we going to get... Listen, we're not going to get a full card in Pokédoku, but we could at least get five. Getting five would go crazy. And there's no regions on this one, so I could do this one maybe. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Firefighting. Incineroar. What? He's a professional wrestler with fire in his name. Uh, Cinder Ace. This is unbelievable. What is, what is Cinder Ace? Fire soccer? Fire first in evolution. Oh, fire, fire dragon. Charizard, or is he flying? Oh, brother. Okay, fighting monotype. This is easy. My champ. Monotype dragon. I can do this. It's not Gyarados. He's water flying. It's not Dragonite. He's dragon flying. It's Giratina. Uh, altered? Nope. <laughs> Rayquaz is a flyer. Drag Gibble. Gibble. Gibble's a little dragon dude. Or is he dragon dark? Gibble. He's not. He's not dragon at all, apparently. Dragon Dratini. Dragon Air. For, monotype first in evolutionary line. I think we gotta go simple on this one. We'll go Rattata. Um, fire, dark first in evolution line. We will go Tyranitar's little lad who is called Larvitar. What? How is Larvitar not a dark type? It's rock ground. Where the hell does the what does bite come from when he evolves? A lot of non-dark Pokemon have that move? Bro, no 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 no. I have a Tyranitar in Pokemon Go called Titar Dark. So that I know when I go to a raid, don't bring the other one because he's got like some rock slide shit that's useless. You gotta bring Titar Dark. Tyranitar is dark, but Larvitar isn't. Oh, brother. So he had a midlife crisis, and all of a sudden, I got to deal with sad Pikachu? Blaziken. Is Blaziken not like the evolved version of Cinder Ace? Charizard was right, but it's got to be Charizard Mega X. It's not. Cinder Ace and Blaziken are two different evolutionary lines. They're, they look exactly the same. One plays soccer and one does Tai Bo. She asked me, well, there's a room to grow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pokemon is fucked up. I'll say it. They made too many. Even people who love Pokemon are like, fuck you. Wait a minute. He's right. Maybe they should have made more than 150. Okay. So like, I'll, I'm not going to stop it at 150, but they definitely should have stopped at like 400. Because it's just getting absurd now. It should always be bound to the periodic table. So they can only add new Pokemon when they discover new elements. 
Because then we would not have Pokemon that are like, they don't fucking do anything. Like what the hell is Dunsparce? It's like a little piece of candy. He's like a little Rolo. Every time I see him in Pokemon Go, I'm like, what is this? Somebody left like a potato chip bag on the ground. He's Gen 2. The rot set in early, brothers. The rot set in early. Celebrity mashup. This is Kaylee Kuwoku with Tom Hiddleston's face or Tom Hiddleston's hair. That's a gimme. If they could give me like some tough ones, that would make my day. Often sold in malls. What is the ice cream of the future? Dippin' Dots. 32 ounces of chocolate. Caramel milk chocolate macadamia clusters. Okay. Macadamia nuts, relatively expensive. 967 grams, net weight, two pounds. Okay. Now, a pound of peanuts at Costco is $10.99. Macadamia nuts, much more expensive than peanuts for sure. But what would drive you crazy is that because these are not pure macadamia nuts, the per capita cost might be around the same just because of the fact that chocolate and caramel are cheaper than the, the raw nut in order to produce. Now, also, I'm just thinking as well, you got to think about auspicious consumption. People that are willing to buy this are probably willing to spend a little bit more. So I'm going to start the bidding at I'm going to go to, I'm going to, in Canada, I think this would be $17.99. I'm going to say in America, it's $13.99. The dude can't be stopped. He knows groceries. You start from first principles. You, you compare it. You find its comparables. You do the mathematical calculations, and it's right every time, okay? They're like 60 calories per cluster. They have done some serious science to make the most unhealthy foods of all time. I'm also going to say something that might bother you. Now, keep in mind, I love the island. I was just on Hawaii. I ate a lot of macadamia nuts when I was there. I was excited to eat macadamia nuts. After leaving Hawaii, I was like, I don't need to see macadamia nuts for a while. They're okay. But after eating a few too many, they started to taste like uh, they were made of like shaved fingernails. I'll take a cashew. I'll take a peanut. I'll probably take a macadamia nut over an almond, though. I'll take a macadamia nut over a walnut any day of the week. That's for sure. All I'm going to say is that Subway is the best thing that ever happened to the macadamia nut, which you don't get to say very often. Walnuts are delicious. Long time no see, grandma. Did I ever tell you that I think the reason I don't like walnuts is I, we, we found it out on stream together, right? I was like, you ever notice how like one in three walnuts you open up at your grandma's house at Christmas is like green on the inside and tastes like cleaning product? And people were like, brother, those are just rotten. Those are just rotten walnuts. It's like the only time I ever ate walnuts is every Christmas my grandma would like put out a display of like nuts and a nutcracker. And then that's, I would be like, whoa, that's cool. I'm eight years old. I'd crack it open and eat it. Ew. I didn't realize lady was putting out the same nuts for like my entire childhood. I was seeing the same nut for like eight or nine years. <laughs> I didn't realize they were just decoration. I should have stuck to the, the Werther's. Weinstein Company made 125 milli starring Jamie Foxx. 2013, Jamie Foxx is the star, made over $100 million. Ah, it's Django Unchained. Shouldn't have even needed the, the genre on that, but at least we bank some points. And then a universal movie, it didn't make, oh my God, what is a precipitous drop off, bro? 118 milli in week three, but it only made 10 milli in its third weekend, starring Hugh Jackman. 2013, this could be Universal. Universal means it's not a Wolverine movie. It would be a 20th Century Fox production. Universe, it's just like a year after Real Steel. It's a musical history drama. It's not The Greatest Showman, right? Isn't The Greatest Showman from like 2016? <clears throat> Tagline, fight, dream, hope, love. Thanks for nothing. Directed by Tom Hooper, starring Russell Crowe. And Anne... Oh, it's Les Miserables! Of course. And then... 
I just don't know what this is. Gangster Squad. One of the abs... Don't, don't look at this, okay? One of the worst uh, names and certainly one of the worst posters I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, this is a great clip for your librarian. Whenever, like, someone posts something horrible on Twitter, one of the worst names and one of the worst posters I've ever seen in my entire life. Clip. And now what's behind you next to the Santa? This is um, 400 wipes to wipe down my bike after I take a ride on it. It's a big bin. It's a cylindrical, almost looks like the size of a paint bucket. You need all 400. I've entered the phase of my life where I actually like use things up and then recycle the container. Okay, old ass. <laughs> you know you're getting old when you like use a pen until the ink runs out instead of just like losing it somewhere. As a bald man, do you wear a sweatband? Yes. If you are bald, I can't speak for those of you with hair. I usually let you speak for me. If you are bald, I would recommend wearing a sweatband. It helps out a lot because you don't have anything to catch the sweat coming off of your head. I'm finally almost at the end of a chapstick. Dude, my kid blew my mind. I went up to go to bed last night. It was like 1030. She was sitting on the floor reading a book. I said, why are you asleep, you, you insane person? And she said, Daddy, I put lip gloss on all by myself. And I went, you what? And then she like puckered her lips and she had lip balm on. And I was like, where did you get it? And she was like, the top drawer in the bathroom. And I said, what did you do with the tube? And she said, I put it back. And I was like, you're fucking three. What do you mean you put it back? Then I was like, this liar. And I went into the bathroom. She put it back. It was, it was blowing my mind. She's cracked, bro. I don't even put it back. I usually put it like right next to wherever I was when I put the lip balm on. And then I'm like, where the fuck is it? Kate, did you move the lip balm? I always put it back in the top drawer. I always put it back in the top drawer. There is something wrong with the male brain. This is another good clip for you. I know when I can't find something, I am 95% more likely to have misplaced it than my wife. But my first reaction is always, my wife must have moved it because it's not where I thought it was. Like the logic and the emotion are not connecting. They're not speaking to each other. Yeah, because I don't move shit. That's why I'll be like, Kate, where'd you move the ketchup? And then she'll be like, I didn't touch the ketchup. You used it last. And I'm like, I don't think so. And then she's like, why don't you check where it always is? And I'm like, I just did, obviously. And then she's like, check again. And then I open it up and I'm like, how the fuck did she get the ketchup back there? I literally just looked there. Not only was I the one who misplaced it, but it wasn't even misplaced in the first place. There's something, there's something about it, man. Tuppence Middleton, of course. We all knew Tuppence Middleton was in that one. Charles Dance. John Churchill, Paul Giamatti, Paul Fox, Tom Simmons, musical guest, Bill Nye. I, I'm not saying this in a bad way. He's had some work done, right? That's not the way that a man's face changes as he ages. The eyebrows don't get higher. They get bushier. Just look at Eugene Levy. No doubt. I mean, he looks good, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, <laughs> he does kind of look like, he does kind of look like the Giga Chad. Yeah, sure. Well, when you're about to insult somebody, you have to start with a compliment. You have to say he looks good. I mean, he's probably like 73. Have you seen the average 73 year old? He's doing okay. He does look kind of scared. Who said he looks scared, man? He does kind of look scared. He looks scared, but he's, he's... Oh, he's like holding it together. He's like, I can't be scared. My kids are here. He's scared because you snatched his fit? I don't even know what that means, okay? And no, I didn't. I'm not wearing a bow tie. 
They don't make guys like this anymore. If you called the LAPD in 1941, this guy's coming to your house. Whatever happened to this kind of guy? This guy used to make up 58% of the Major League Baseball Association. Now you just don't see him anymore. He plays a cop in like a period piece and that's it. They all have beards now? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, where am I going with this? Got to get to fucking Robert De Niro. Do I got it today? You, you puffed a magic dragon fucker when you milk me? A little better? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Fokker. You just got out of the circle of trust, Fokker. You look more like French Stewart. That is definitely true. So, I don't know who Lily Collins is, but I know from yesterday she was in some overblown, probably like $500 million budget Disney production. So we go to Lily Collins, and then we just scroll down until we find it. She was in Okja. Okay, respect earned again. Mirror, mirror. That's what I was looking for. Um, she was in freaking Tarzan? Really? Oh, because Phil Collins is her dad. So uh, there's got to be a way. Hang on. I got something here. It's like mirror, mirror. I'm taking too long. I don't know why I'm scrolling so much. Also, what a great picture of Sean Bean. Holy cow. What is he, like 27 in this picture? Two. Julia Roberts. That allows you to get to the Oceans films. Maybe we could just get there via Valentine's Day, which gives you to Bradley Cooper, which gets you to... Why was I going to Bradley Cooper? Oh, because of the Silver Linings Playbook. Because of Silver Linings Playbook. Robert De Niro. Two. Dirty Grandpa. Okay, it's not that bad. Gary Oldman, the courier, Dermot Mulroney, Dermot Mulroney. Short as possible is always two, though. It's just like, this is a rare two where I know both of their names. Lily Collins doesn't equal Lily James. Yeah, I know, but like, Lily Collins, Emma Roberts, and Lily James are the same person in my head. And I think one of the reasons that happens is because, like, Lily Collins was in Mirror, Mirror, which is like a Cinderella remake, but quirky. And then Lily, who's the other one? Lily Collins, Lily James? Lily James was actually Cinderella in the Cinderella remake that came out in like 2015. Like, it's, it's fucking confusing, man. Lily James is Cinderella in the movie Cinderella, yeah. See, it's tough. Where does Emma Roberts fit into this? I don't know. She's just collateral damage. <laughs> Which starred Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I digress. Movie. History drama from 2006. I'm going to know it. An ambitious... Uh, it's Marie Antoinette. <laughs> Saw someone say 1780 footwear, and I went, it's Marie Antoinette. An Austrian teenager marries the Dauphine of France. Mmm, problematic. I don't care if it is 1780. He shouldn't have been doing that, probably. I don't know. I don't really know history that well. We love Sofia Coppola, don't we, folks? We do. Sofia. Sofia lost in translation. Her masterpiece, of course. The Virgin Suicide's also very good. Oft forgotten. People, oft forgotten, but very good. One of Kirsten Dunst's best turns outside of perhaps melancholia why is he speaking like donald trump bro that's aggressive that's just how i talk he talks like me if i've been talking like this forever he started talking like that after he heard me talk true you're like 80 no he's older than me that's the fucked up part it really do be your own next you're gonna say he copied going bald from you bro listen he might have had that before me. This is some pre-World War I or during World War I shit. Because part of the Treaty of Versailles is that they didn't let them wear these helmets anymore. Which I get, because they do look dangerous. 
But like they also kind of look fucking sick. <laughs> they also look pretty cool. And they didn't do much better with the next helmets. Honestly, they should bring these back. The seventh international automobilist lung in Berlin. This word is too motherfucking long. Germans, explain yourselves. Oh, that's like eight words. Never mind. Catch, catch me in this shit as soon as the spring pops, man. You, th you think convertibles are nice now? Imagine feeling the wind through your leg hair. It's like a damn lawnmower with a Tostitos scoop attached to it. Why didn't they just build like a Ford Fusion back then? They had all the power. <laughs> it is German font. You're, I told you, bro. It's German font. Okay, this shit is like 1912. Boom, 1906. This is like the United Nations. This man is evil. I don't know. He might be a hero for all I know. <laughs> but he's got an evil vibe. Do you see that or do, is that just me? Can somebody tell me, just lie to me and tell me this man is evil? He's about to turn evil if he's not evil yet. It's 1964, 1958. Okay, I got my ass beat today. He's about to steal the Tesseract. Dude, you know what's fucked up? That might be why he looks evil to me. Does look like Stellan Skarsgård. By the way, what the fuck was going on in... The, it's been 10 years. Can we get an answer on this? You know in the second Avengers movie where Stellan Skarsgård gets naked and dips himself in that like Asgardian pool? What, what the fuck were they doing with that, man? They just put that shit in the movie, like a gratuitous nudie scene for all the MILFs watching the Age of Ultron, and then never, never brought it back ever again? They needed to up their appeal with the female demographic? Well, if it worked for them. By the way, I'm here to, I'm going to go to bat for two multimillionaires, okay? I'm going to go to bat for... Uh, Chris Evans, and I'm going to go to bat for Taika Waititi. Why? It's, it's simple. Taika Waititi is getting dragged for doing an interview where he said he only did Thor Ragnarok for the money. Are you stupid? Of course he only did Thor Ragnarok for the money. And Thor Ragnarok is fucking good. So it's not enough that dude made like the best Thor movie. He also has to lie and be like, oh yeah, Thor was my passion project. Like he already did you a solid Thor, boys. Now you want him for the rest of his life. He's got to be like, oh, my favorite movie I've ever done, my passion project. It's the movie where Thor meets the Hulk in the arena, okay? Like just take the movie, it's good, and then go with it, okay? Same thing for Chris Evans. People are like, not Chris Evans, he gave like an interview eight years ago where he's like, I don't really like being Captain America, I'd rather make more interesting movies. People are like, no, Chris, don't say it. He was a great Captain America. Now, it's not enough that he was Captain America, he, he's also got to, for the rest of his life, be like, it was the honor of my lifetime playing Captain America. Bro, he already did you a solid, okay? He was a good Captain America. He didn't phone it in in the movies, unless they asked him to. People were like, we need a real super fan. No, you don't. You just need, a, you just need to log off. <laughs> Sorry, apparently I'm not playing the daily. I'm just on the regular. You seen Sunshine? I saw that shit on like watch-movies.gov when it came out. Some file sharing website named after an octopus or something. Your ass was still positively zygotic. Now this is interesting. Kwanzaa. Sanyo. Selling some Swiss timepieces. BH Hirani Radio Service. I think this is like Nairobi. Circa 1986. 
Okay, that's the greatest geographical guess anyone's ever made. I was off by 13 years, but geographically speaking, you got to admit, that's... If I got it wrong, I was going to say unlucky. Now that I got it right, it's only fair for me to say that I'm a genius. I'm spitting out my cereal. Yo, what kind though? Drought? Draft relief? Drought relief? What I say when I've had too many fat tugs, am I right? This is really hard for me because if this was America, I would be like, this is photoshopped. Because this dude's definitely like a lawyer from 1979. And this dude is like, he owns like an ice cream shop in Mississippi in 1922. But England is weird because they were like, they kind of dressed formal longer than North America did. The lighting does make it look like there's two different dudes here, though. <laughs> well, they're two different dudes, obviously, but like this dude has been photoshopped in or this dude has been photoshopped in. Here's the thing. Like a $6 bus pass. Well, I don't know. Is that, is that for one day? It's not $6, but a six pound bus pass for one day seems kind of expensive for what might be 1903. <laughs> this font is like, that's like an 80s font. This is like a Zeller's Cafe restaurant menu font. But this blocked font, this is more like, you know, extra, extra, Dewey beats Truman, read all about it. How much, how much, 30 P for each paperback, two paperbacks on early buses from London Transport with many illustrations and rare early drawings. What the fuck does it mean, Basil? 30, 30 P each, 30 cents for a book. Fuck it, bro. I'll tell you straight up. This is London, 1985. 1974. It is London, though. That's a tough one. Oh! <laughs> we have not crossed the 40,000 threshold in a while. We will not be doing factual sports. It's all about the NBA. You know ball? Yeah, but I just, I want them to represent sports with equal opportunity. Where's my NHL factal? They don't got equal fans? Oh, I guess we should be fucking doing uh, cricket. What is that big cricket one called? The ends? Baby's got the ends? Every, every day, and soak the ashes, that's it. NFL fans who say poverty league when uh, all of a sudden Barstool starts running 16-way parlays on India versus Pakistan at the Ashes. <clears throat> and then like three seconds later, they're like, I just put my life savings on Billy the Kid getting 17 wickets this end. But how can it be the most popular sport if nobody watches it? Like, I don't know a single person who watches cricket and is supposed to be the most popular sport on the planet, it doesn't make sense. Are you from India? No, but you don't know that. So stop being so presumptuous. Mandarin's the most popular language. Do you know people that speak it? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. Didn't you see that? Uh, librarian, can we get Van Morrison singing Chinese real quick? Hang on. Is this right? Just one second. Yeah, of course, bro. This is my uncle at our Thanksgiving karaoke fest. He was ripping it up, bro. <laughs> oh man. He is spitting. I mean, the way he's holding the microphone, you could tell he's having a moment. Me holding in my laughter until I 
watch the retranslated into English one, even though this shit's funny as fuck. You know what I love? I love the restraint of the drummer. You gotta respect the drummer in this situation while Van Morrison's going insane. The drummer is just putting in that workman like, you know, staying on the, the ones, twos, the threes, and the fours, and then a little fill at the end of each phrase. He could have been going as crazy as Van Morrison is going, but that would take away from what Van Morrison's doing. What is he saying? He's spitting. He's talking to God on the phone. Oh, man. I hate you. This is an awful thing to do to a song. This is a tragedy. I disagree. It's an important cultural exchange in a time of heightened military tensions between the U.S. and China. It may even, in fact, reduce the risk of a nuclear war between the two countries. Soft power is real. That's damn true. That is, that is damn true. Oh, man. That's great because I can't tell if it's satire, which means it's amazing satire. I even hovered over the profile. Steel, deer, and beer. Rolling rocks. Best around. One shot. Oh, it's got to be satire. Oh, it's not satire. Oh, this person is a true believer. That makes it way funnier, though. The dude actually thinks that that's going to reduce the risk of a nuclear war. Nah, bro. I don't know. I had a joke in there, but I couldn't figure out how to land the plane. Yeah, John Cena is the reason we can't have a, a nuclear war between the U.S. and China. John Cena is going to stop the nuclear missile like Ant-Man and the Wasp. What are we doing? I don't know. It's awkward. I got an hour to kill. But I don't want to play sap because I enter a fugue state every time. There you go. That should keep you busy for a minute. Throw in the game suggestion nail bomb into chat. Then just go in to crack another Coke Zero. Glug, 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 glug. View count goes up 25%. Hey, guys, it's, it's the, the Matrix where they bust into the room. He doesn't know what he's playing. Get in here. And then in this sequel, all the Agent Smiths comes in. Terraria, have you ever tried Stardew Valley? Have you ever tried Stardew Valley? Payday 3 came out. You said you were going to check it out. Have you ever said, hey, you still haven't checked out uh, Imperium Rome? You could pray for five minutes. Should I become, like, religious? I don't believe in God, which is, like, I think a big hurdle. But I'm envious of the community that they have like it seems like you'd have something to do on sunday mornings where you would like meet people in your community and exchange like baked goods and stuff like that drink some soda out of two liter bottles you would love it i probably would that, i would be like but then i'd be fucked up i'd be like eaten alive every day by myself i'd be like oh fuck everybody at, nobody at church knows i'm an atheist they'd be like we all know you're an atheist they don't know I'm an atheist. We all, you talk about it every Sunday. You're the only one not wearing khakis, bro. They don't know I'm just here to perfect my deviled eggs recipe. Just open Google Maps and fuck around. Yeah, but like I'm out and about like 7.45 a.m. on Sunday. There's no place open but fucking church, bro. That's their competitive advantage. And then they close at like 10.15. You can't do shit at 7.45 a.m. on a Sunday. No cafes open. Maybe like a Starbucks or something. I'm not allowed to go there anymore. For the Israel stuff, I guess so. Also, like the union busting. I don't know. And the coffee and the pastries aren't very good. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons, honestly. Hey, did you see the Matt Reif podcast video, Chibli? where he said a lot of people hate on me online, and then I realized that people only hate on strangers out of jealousy. Uh, and I realized that when I look back at my own life, there were a lot of times that I was a hater, and those were all motivated by jealousy too. And then Tana Manjo said, that's really interesting. Do you think people hate Osama bin Laden because they're jealous of him? 
one of the all-time great comebacks, man. It just, it was right off the cuff. I was so impressed. That's the thing. I don't really hate anybody. I don't, here's, here's a very humbling experience that I've, uh, sorry, I guess epiphany that I've had recently. And the, because so many fucking people hate me for really no reason. Mm. And it really made me realize that like people only hate somebody they're jealous of. And I've been, I've been guilty of hating people. And when I really sat back and thought about it, it was because I was jealous of where that person was in their life. I felt like maybe they got an opportunity that I should have gotten. That was yeah. a really, really good, well-rounded answer. I'm trying to wrap my Thank head you. around. Do you think people who hate Osama bin Laden are jealous of him? <laughs> yeah. Life is temporary. Do you not care about that? I mean, people are going to die, but mm, inevitable, maybe? I, um, my left stick doesn't work. So I cannot, never mind, maybe I can play. Maybe I forgot that you don't actually use your left stick except to spin around in this game. <laughs> I forgot how to use a controller. Can I say something without people getting mad at me? I watched Lemmy play Minecraft for like 15 minutes this morning. And I feel like I finally understood how like Zoomers feel watching me play games and struggle with like the most fundamental basic mechanics. Because I was really like, I was watching this dude play Minecraft and I was like, what are you doing? He's like swinging with the pickaxe, swinging with the pickaxe. Then he's got to get like a dirt block out and he's, he scrolls for like 90 seconds to go get to the dirt block. And I'm like, brother, you just hit eight on the keyboard, please. You're killing me. But that's got to be how people feel watching me do like almost anything in a video game, including Minecraft, which is funny. It's satire. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. Because then you said, no, it's not satire. It's early onset dementia. No, it's not. It's just when you get old, you get better at different things and worse at things that don't matter, like being good at inventory management in a video game. You get really good at like you know, filling up your 401k to the tax advantage maximum every year and then just letting it sit for like three decades, which young people are not very good at. You get very bad at having dirt blocks in your offhand so that if you accidentally mine into lava, you um, don't get swallowed up by the magma before you die. I can't believe that we're on like echo number seven of that discourse. Did you now see that... Um, that lady said that her dog is more important than any other child on the planet, which is fine for you to believe. I wouldn't say it out loud personally, but um, and then someone else said, that's insane. If a stranger's child and my cat ran out into traffic, I would be sad for my cat, but I would save the child for sure. Someone replied to them and said, then you don't deserve your cat. And then a clown emoji and then the middle finger emoji bro it literally hit them with the clown middle finger on that one that said i hope your cat divorces you bro shit got me good when i saw the the clown middle finger emoji combo the clown finger <laughs> oh man it's the same way I feel whenever there's like a Reddit post that's obviously made up about like a husband and wife having a disagreement and it gets quote tweeted by like a hundred accounts that are like, do straight people even like each other? Bro, this shit was written by chat GPT. Don't let it like cloud your view of society, all right? You got to leave your house from time to time. Your dream is your dream. Me, when I have a dream, that's my dream. MFers responding good to what's up as if they don't have ears. That's true. I go through that sometimes at daycare pickup when there's another dad and he says, how's it going? And I say, what's up at exactly the same time. And then I say, good. And he says, not much. How about you? And then I'm like, how many different like conversations can you have at the same time with the same person? One of us just has to like abandon our conversational thread and then just like accept that it's it's over man we gotta pick whether we're going with how's it going or what's up okay here we go not run pigeon run please after party this is stressful but i know i have for whatever reason i have decent rhythmic memory 
So just focus. Decent rhythmic memory. Rhythmic memory. So true. When the skibbity ain't risen, we hodl. Okay, we're pogging. Some people can't handle the heat.
Oh. Oh, <laughs> good game, good game. Oh. How long were we in that time? Jesus Christ, GG. Six minutes. Good game. Good. I mean, to the victor go the spoils. Probably a bot. Me, when I get beaten in anything. Bro, have you seen the state of chat bots? There's no way Danny Boy's a bot. First off, they're, they've gifted subscriptions. Secondly, they can't even write English, brother. And it's the only language they know. I, gotta, I cracked the code for society, by the way. Nah. Shit can't be on sale all the time. They think we're stupid. True. Day we are. Why am I getting emails that are like, we're having a great sale? It's the day after Cyber Monday, you disingenuous motherfucker. No, it's not on sale. <laughs> we're having a big oh, Christmas thought... sale. Oh, really? The time of the year when everybody's buying gifts, when demand is at its peak, you decided to make things cheaper. Are you the worst fucking business of all time? <laughs> you liars! <laughs> they just, they, I look, man, I hate, I know you're joking, but like, yeah, you just, they just make up prices and then say it's on sale all the time. They're making yeah, it all up. And they just He's attach the closest holiday that's like as possible. Like, oh, it's a uh, ice cream day sale. Uh, I will say, I did buy a beautiful Turkish rug, like seventy five percent off. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's Turkish rug. Yeah, Rugs are good, was it a hair it transplant? Shipped, it shipped from Turkey yesterday. It was a good stream today. Oh, uh, she said, oh yeah. Can I get a boneless? Um, yeah. With a little bit of poop on it. So true. Let me get an everything bag, about a half pound of poop, lettuce, tomato, bacon. So far, what does 35 feel like? Feels like a hungry. Hungry is a big one. Why does he only pronounce bagel right when he's doing the bit? Americans, when a Canadian says a word that was originally from like the Lebanese language with like a slight change in the vowel sound. You, sir, have won the internet. Why am I getting so many minus twos? It's true. Back to the lab with that one. Americans, when their next door neighbor says, y'all get that there, there, John. And they say, yes, sir, I have it right here. Here you go. Americans, when a Canadian says bagel. Where are you from, buddy? Millennials, when somebody says you won the internet, it is the best feeling of all time. You feel like maybe, I'm starting to feel like maybe millennials are cooked. And that's just me being honest. I feel like Gen Z is steeped in um, the internet. And that's fine. And then Gen X and older, is able to live a non-digital life if required. But then millennials are constantly in this like half analog, half digital world that I think has broken our brains forever. We're incapable of being completely genuine, but also incapable of being uh, completely ironic. It leaves us constantly out of the joke depending on the generation of the person who's making it. What brought this bit on? Recognizing that the woman who was saying that she hates three-year-old kids but loves her dog is probably the exact same age as me. She's got 80s energy. I hate to say it. You need a hobby? Bro, I have hobbies. I ride the Peloton. Stop trying to get me to do shit that's bad for me, like playing eight hours of League of Legends a day. Like, no, we want you to garden. No, you fucking don't. Anytime I talk about doing yard work, you're like, let your yard turn to loam and let, let the natural clovers pass over it. Anytime I talk about raking leaves, they're like, you should just let those rot. I love the yard work. Okay, you're lucky. I remember your name, but I don't remember why I know it. So you're lucky. If I was still 34, I would remember. Go play squash or something. Well, every quarter I look at the Vancouver community centers and I go, maybe this is the one where I'll start doing like some community center classes. Maybe I'll learn a little bit of Mandarin Chinese. Maybe I'll learn how to cook tamales or something like that. And then I go, oh, 
a Spanish language cultural exchange cooking class. That looks cool. And then I like, oh, of course, it's for Mondays at 9.27 till 9.45 a.m. Makes perfect sense. Can they get a community center going for the 92% of the population that is not retired? I'm begging you, man. I would love to do beginner to intermediate pickleball. I cannot do it. Tuesdays at 8.55 a.m. Oh, that doesn't work for you? It really doesn't, it doesn't work for me at all. It's possibly the worst time you could come up with. They want us divided. So true. The community center wants, wants us divided. Fallout 2X. Why not just Peloton in the evening? So it's not about getting the hobby. It's so you just want me to stop Pelotoning. It was a joke. Listen, you got to be careful with joking because your last 25 messages were updating me on where Bear Taffy is in the other world, in Spelunky 2. So the first time you type a real message, I'm going to notice. And then I'm going to play it off of the fact that your last eight messages were chat GPT. Where is Spelunky in, uh, where is Bear in Spelunky right now? Your ass is getting cross audited. I'll be like, really? You claimed uh, $3,500 in taxable income last year, and there's a Lamborghini Gallardo in your driveway. Make it make sense. Uh, 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 it was a gift. Here's a gift. You're going to the fucking slammer. A Lamborghini would be fuego. Can I tell you something? <clears throat> I see a lot of nice cars in Vancouver. I um, used to not give nice cars attention because I was like, they know they've got a nice car. They don't need the attention from me. Now when I see a nice car, I make sure to look at it. Because I'm like, they bought it. It's nice. Let's let, her, let them give them a little attention. Like, I think they know that I'm putting on airs. If I'm surrounded by Honda Civics and then like a, a Lamborghini goes by, me looking in the non-direction of the Lamborghini is like, come on. What am I doing? That's just, they're living rent-free inside of my head. Instead... I look at the Lamborghini so they know that I'm not intimidated by it. Like, I'm, the Lamborghini doesn't hold power over me. I don't have to look away from it. Instead, I look at the Lamborghini, and then I kind of give them a look like, if that's your thing. But in my head, I'm trying to project an energy that's like, I'd rather have a Rolls Royce. Nice Lamborghini. Oh, couldn't quite qualify for the Rolls Royce Phantom, huh? That's all right. The Lamborghini is a good starter car. And then they're 18 years old with a new driver sticker. Don't even get me started, man. See the people with the new driver sticker not using their signal lights. The, if there's ever a time to use your signal lights, it's when you're advertising that you're a new driver. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Took my bike to the lake. Brought my shovel, brought my rake. Took my boy to the swing. Let him swing, let them ring. But my friends, Italian beef, make them fart and make them queef. Abraham Lincoln was governor here. Only a steel man can be loved. You know what I'm talking about? Sufjan Stevens?